Hey, welcome. Today, let's learn how to use the famous group by function of pandas. So the group by function is a little bit scary sometimes because when you run it, nothing is returned or the thing that is returned looks a little bit off. So that could be a little bit overwhelming when you're first starting. It definitely was for me. So I want to explain to you what's happening there, how you can make the best out of using the group by function because it's actually quite useful. Um, here I import my pandas uh, module, of course, and I import my data. Again, I'm using the NYC jobs data set. Um, I use it in a bunch of my uh, pandas videos before. So if you want to check them out, you can uh, find them either below in the description or I'll link them somewhere here. Uh, so basically in this data set, what I have is job openings in New York City government. We have a job ID, the name of the, the title of the job, which agency opened up this position, whether it's external or internal, and what we expect the salary to start from and to go up to. Um, so let me group this data set in uh, using the column agency and let's see what happens. So yeah, when you run this, as you can see, you get something that is quite indecipherable and you're like, okay, but what happened now? What can I do? Uh, it's a little bit confusing and that's why most of the time it's a, a bit scary to use group by. Uh, let's see what the type of the, what is returned is. So it is a pandas core group by generic data frame group by object. It's a group by object. And what it includes is it has groups of this data set, so basically subsets of this data set per each agency. And that's why it cannot visualize something to us and that's why it's kind of hard to understand. So let's go step by step and understand what it looks like. So what you can do with these groups is to apply something on them, do something on them, like we did with the apply function before. Um, for example, if I again say group by for agency and you, I can say give me the mean of it. What it will try to do is to calculate the mean of all the numerical columns that are in this data set per agency. So as you can see, I have all the distinct names of agencies here. And it thought that job ID is a numerical column, salary range from the numerical column, salary range two is a numerical column. That's why it calculated the mean salary range from for this agency and then gave me that number did the same with all the other numerical columns too. So this is one way of using it. If you don't want the mean of all the, or if you don't want this action to be done to all the numerical or possible columns, what you can do instead is to call one column only. So let's say I want salary range from only, and then call a mean on this one. So then it will give you the mean salary range from values for each agency separately. So that's another way of using it. Mean, of course, is not the only one. There are many different uh, actions you can take on your columns after you group your data set. This could be mean, uh, I'll just write it here. For example, you can have median, you can have min, you can have max, or you can sum them up. Um, but of course, this is not a comprehensive list for everything that you can do to the groups, you can visit this link uh, at the documentation and you will be able to see many more options of what you can do. So as always, when you're using these functions that you don't really know uh, everything about, it's always a great idea to go check out the documentation. All right, another thing that you can do is you do not only have to apply something or a function like this, you can also apply a bunch of different functions. So I will again take this grouping and maybe I want to apply two things. I want to see the mean and I also want to see the median. Then it will return something like this to me. So for the salary range from column after it has grouped everything by agency, it gives me the mean and it also gives me the median for salary range from values. This is another thing you can do. And this is not the only way to apply things to the uh, groups. So as I said, this is basically groups. Um, what you can do is to apply a function to these groups. So for example, let's call it do something to the groups. And I would have to define it, of course. Something does need to actually happen to the groups. 
Um, so maybe at first, let's see what a group looks like. So we'll be able to understand what we can do to these groups, because if you don't know what they look like, it will be hard to understand what they, what are the possibilities of things that we can do. So I'll just print an array of stars after each group so we can understand where a group ends. Let's see. So I'm saying group by agency and then take the salary range from column. So, all right. Looks like this is the first group. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. This is the first group. Um, this, these are the values of the salary range from column. These are the indices. Here is where it ends. And the name of this group is admin for children's SVCS. So turns out basically a group is this. These, these values with the corresponding indices is one group. And this is another group, the name of the group. This is another group, the name of the group. I also want to see the type, like what, what does that look like? Okay, this is this an array. What is it? Let's see. All right, it's a series object. So it's quite simply just a column at the end of the day. And this, this column, for example. So we can do whatever we can do to series objects to this column. So for example, I don't really want to print these anymore. I can say print uh, or even return. I'll just return a group. I'm not feeling very inspirational today so or inspired today. So let's do mean again. So for each group, for each series object that is being sent to me, I will do a mean. And we basically get the same thing as just saying here, calculate the mean, right? Instead, we send it to um, a function and then we calculate the mean and then we return the mean to uh, back to the apply function. As I said, I've made a video about the apply function before. I will link it somewhere here so you can go check that out if you're not sure how to use the apply function or the details of it. Um, but of course, you can do something much more sophisticated in here. That's why you might want to use apply function instead of directly like mean, median, max, min, or things like that. One nice thing you can do is if I just kind of follow this example is instead of calling or grouping this data set in one column, you can group it in multiple columns. So maybe I want to group it in agency and let me see the original data set and posting type. Let's see what that looks like. And I want to calculate the mean again. It looks like I need to cast this into a data frame first for it to look nicer. Yeah, so for each agency and for each posting type, now this mean is calculated. So instead of just one value, we also divide it into yet another row where we differentiate between external or internal posting types. And you don't have to uh, get one column only. You can also get two columns to calculate these uh, mean, median, or whatever on. Uh, so maybe salary range from and salary range to then what I will get will be for each agency and each type of posting type for each combination of these two, I get the mean for salary range from column and the salary range to column. One little detail here is, let's say, as you can see here, now we have a multi-index, multi-level multi index. So agency is an index and posting type is an index. If you don't want that to happen uh, and you want things to be neat in a table still, you can actually use as index as false because by default it is true um, these uh, columns that we group by uh, turn into indices but if you don't want it you can set as index as false and then what it will return to you will be a proper data frame where these guys also belong in a column let's see some information that we can uh, extract from these groups so again i will call no, probably easier to copy and paste um, this group again, just the agency and just the salary range from, or maybe even just, just the agency group. And then I will call this data groups. So now I have all of my groups in this variable. What I can do, one thing I can do is to say, give me first, oops data groups first. Yes. So here is what we get for each agency. 
we have one row, as you can see here. And but we have a job ID, we have a civil service title, posting type, job category, seller range from and seller range too. So what happened here? They are not being aggregated in any way. This is not mean because we cannot calculate the mean of the civil service title. Um, this is not mean, this is not max, like what's happening. So when you say first, basically what is being returned is for a, a row is created for each group that we have in our group by object. And the first value, the first values uh, is passed back to you. So let's see, admin for children's SVCS. If I want to see uh, that group, All right, so that group will look like this, right? Data sets where the agency uh, equals to admin for children's SVCS. And the first row looks like this. The so job ID is 510376. 510376. Salary range from and to are the same. They are 42,731. 42,731 and this is external, this is social services, it's exactly the same. So what happens is this is one group in the group by object and there are a lot of different groups based on agency, uh, per agency. And when you say first, when you call first on your group by object, it returns to you the first entry of each group. Differently, you can also say last and it will give you the last one of each group. So this and this should be the same. And as you can see, they are actually the same. Another thing you can do is we can get the groups. So um, let's see what that looks like. If I say data groups, show me the groups. What it will tell me is the name of this group and then the indices that belong to this group. So for this one, there are a bunch of indices here. Uh, for this one, there is a bit few, fewer. And for Board of Corrections, we only have this many and so on and so forth. I can also see uh, names of each group. If I call keys, then I get all of the names of different types of groups here. Uh, one thing you can do is actually to get a specific group based on the name. So if I say get group and let's say Human Rights Commission, that sounds serious. Um, and yeah, this is the group that we get. As you can see, we don't have the agency information here because we know the agency value for this is Human Rights Commission, uh, but I get all the job IDs, uh, civil service title, posting type, job category, etc., etc., for uh, this group specifically. And in the previous function, as you remember, if we do not say keys, we'll just get the groups, group name, and the indices, right? Instead, if you don't want to get the keys, so the names, but you want to get the index values, you can also say values. And it will return this time only uh, the index values per group. All right, so this is mainly it for group by function. Uh, I hope it made it a bit more clear for you how you can use it and what you can use it on. Uh, the thing that I'm going to show you now is a bit more on the advanced level, but I think it's actually super useful. I've never used it before. I've learned about it when I was doing research for this video, but I think you are going to like this and want to use it in your projects. So what I'm going to show you is called a grouper. If you are into diving, you might think that that's a fish, but not a fish. Uh, it is basically how you group your data set. So I will call again my uh, data and then I want to group by something. So normally what we do is we pass name of a column here, right? So we can group by it. Instead, what you can do here is to pass a grouper so that your group by function will group things based on this uh, rule in a way. This is especially useful with time series data. So I'm going to create a um, mock data here that we can use. I got this mock data from a documentation of the pandas uh, library. So of course, go check out the documentation. Uh, just kind of like a little disclaimer here. I did not create the data set, but let me import it first. Let's say this is my data set. And this is what that looks like. So I have the published date, uh, the 2nd of January 2000, another one from the 2nd of January 2000, uh, one from the 9th of January and one from the 16th of January. So what it would look like if I grouped 
by the publish date. And I want to see the mean of the price. Right. So it will create one group for the 2nd of January, one group for the 9th of January, and one group for the 16th of January because they belong together. They are the same day. But what if I don't want to group per days that are the same, but I want to group things per week, for example? Then what I can do is to call PD Grouper. I will say the key still is going to be the publish date. But frequency, I can set to be one week. So let's see what that looks like. Ah, not on the data, but the F. All right, um, so this looks quite similar, right? It's basically giving me the same thing. Well, it's because it's calculating based on week and these things belong to different weeks. What if I say two weeks? Now we only have two groups because the frequency is two. So I get one for the first, second, and likely the third entry. And I get, no, I get one for the first two entries. They are one group and the sec third and the fourth entry are another group of their own. So that's quite cool. Now I can set the frequency to whatever I want. For example, if I say one day, it will actually create something for each day and it will even try to fill in the other day. So for the 2nd of January, we have two entries in the original data set. So it will create the mean of those. For the 3rd of January, we don't have any entries. Still, it creates a uh, neat little entry, a row for that one. So if you want to uh, explode your data set into something like this, maybe you can fill all these non-values with zeros and that's something that you want to, or a round down that you want to have and not this concise table, this will be a very useful way of doing so. There's a lot more you can do with the groupers, a lot more information and detail that you can give, a lot more customization that you can do with them, but that would be beyond the scope of this video. So for now, I will give you the documentation link and also where you can see different types of frequencies that you can use. So you can find them here. I will uh, upload this code on GitHub, link it in the description below so you can get access to all these links and the code, but I will also put the links in the description below so you can easily go check them out here. Um, one last thing that I wanna tell you about group by is how you can make it slightly faster. So normally when we're grouping with data, what we do is group by and say, for example, agency, uh, right? And that's all you do. And normally right now it's done quite fast for us. It's not really a big problem, but if you have a gigantic data set and it's taking very long to make it slightly faster, you can toggle sort to be false. Because normally after everything is grouped by, your group by function is sorting everything to be in ascending order, I think, or at least in alphabetical order if there are strings. Uh, and that takes extra amount of time for your group by function to be done. So if you toggle sort to be false, in default it's true, uh, it will probably end up running in a faster way. This is just if you have a big data set that you're dealing with. But that's all. If you have any questions about anything in here, let me know. If you have any ideas of other things that you wanna learn about pandas, again, let me know. Uh, don't forget that you can go grab my free pandas cheat sheet using the link in the description. Once again, thanks for watching and have a great day. I will see you in the next video.